So we had system of linear equations. Systems of linear equations became augmented matrices. So I had my coefficient matrix, I had my constants on this side, and we did all the stuff that, all the stuff you are doing with, with elimination, we're still doing. We're taking rows, we're multiplying by non-zero constants, we're re swapping the rows, we're taking a constant times a row, constant times a row, adding them together, making new rows, that's all elimination. We're just doing it on, quote unquote, the matrix. So everything we've done is how good are you at solving systems of linear equations? Now, one of the things that sometimes happens in math is here's this thing that you've been using, which is these rectangular blocks, and their purpose has been to solve systems of linear equations. But sometimes you look at it and say, you know what? If I divorce it and I say, yes, this is about systems of linear equations, but time out, it sure looks interesting by itself. Could I make this thing that I'm seeing a new toy? Uh, things like that that happen in different branches of math. There's things like you would have elements like A and B and you would say A is related to B by drawing arrows and we have these relationships like A is related to A and we have arrows that relate it and so these are relationships. But then somebody sat down and looked at it and says, you know what, I tend to make dots and arrows could be used for an awful lot of other stuff like travel, communication, do outside of the fact that this is a branch of like, oh, this is about relationships, like binary relations. It's like, ah, how about the pictures? And let's call the pictures this and study the pictures. And it becomes its own branch of math called graph theory. These things are graphs. Let's study graphs. Well, graphs came to be because of that. Yeah, that's an application. Let's look at it as a tool, it as a toy, and study it. And that's the <coughs> same thing we can do here. Yes, these came because of system of linear equations. But it's like they're a example of an application of this new thing. And that's how we separate it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new toy. And it's simply going to be a matrix. So the toys used to be systems of linear equations. It's like, well, how are you solving it with matrices? Well, that's kind of interesting. So matrices are like an application of this. Yeah, so let's only look at it. Let's just look at matrices and, and ignore for a second where they come from. Now, because they're an application, we can't fully, every now and then, we'll get stuck and say, all right, this toy, I want to do something to it. Well, it's like, well, it was used before. What did you do? It, so we, if we want to combine them with other things, well, how did you combine systems of linear equations? Well, it should do the same thing. You know, if you have money, right? It's like, hey, it should act like money, even though it's like numbers. Like I have five and ten, and it's like, well, how do I share money? All right, well, how do I share numbers? It could be used for money. It could be used for other things. All right, so what's a matrix? A matrix is this rectangular array of numbers. We'll write their own symbols. Normally, we're going to have to have some sort of notation for it, and we're usually going to use capital letters for a matrix. Matrices are going to be strictly this rectangular array, say A11, A12, up to A1n, A21, A22, up to A2n, go down to AM1, AM2, up to AMN, and this is a M by N, which is row, column, <coughs> matrix, and we're going to call that its size. And we're going to ignore for the second, this is, well, for systems of linear equations, that's just the coefficients. It's like, you know what, I'll just simply call that a matrix. <laughs> you know, the thing on the left is a matrix. I don't care where it came from. It's just a bunch of numbers written in this form. There are three rows, four columns, matrix, three by four. All right, so that's my matrix. Uh, other ways of notation, since everybody's a double index, you know, one, 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 two, which tells you which row, which column it is, instead of writing it that way, we could just simply say A, I, J. And, and the element is, hey, which row, column are you in? And that's the thing. So if I want to, if I don't tell you the numbers, if I have the numbers, it's the rectangular block. 
If I do not, I say any particular number is an AIJ. Well, what is it? I'm just not going to tell you right now. So here's three ways of writing matrix. A single letter, normally cap. Writing every element down in their appropriate position. Or if I don't know the numbers, I'll just call them AIJ. So if I would go back to this example right here, and I was looking at this is my matrix, what would be A23? It'd be the negative one. Second row, third column, A23. So if I don't know what they are, I just say AIJ. But if you know what they are, you can say where they're located tells you which number, and you can spit the number out. It's the ith row, jth column. All right, so we can write them that way. Now, there's a particular special matrix. And these special matrices right now are, if I would say that there is one row, but n columns, this is a one by n, or it would have m rows and one column. So it's a one by. If it's one dimensional in one of them, either one row or one column, we'll call these things vectors. These are also sometimes called tuples. Uh, if it's n dimensional, it's called an n tuple. So this first one here is a vector, but it's also called an n tuple. This one here is a vector, but it's also called a m tuple. Tuple, which is an ordered object. Order obviously matters. So the word tuple is just simply saying order matters. Uh, the M or the N tells you how many of those things are in order. <laughs> yes? Isn't that the same as an array? Or did you say that? No, you mean vector? Is it not an array? Yeah, they're all vectors. These are all vectors. Anything that's one dimensional is called a vector. And also, one dimensional is also called a tuple and then you say how long it is. Now the word array is not in, for us, we'll use the words vector and matrix. Arrays are also in what? Programming languages, right? And so for us, we're just going to say it's a vector. An nth dimensional tu is a, however long it is, is a, is a tuple. But on the other hand, if I would look at this, if I have one row, that means it's based upon a row. If I have this guy tells me that I have one column, it's based upon a column. So I usually designate the differences of these two and call this guy a row vector and this guy a column vector. All right, no big surprise. Row vectors, column vectors, but they're both vectors, but they're different, obviously. <laughs> when I write them, a row vector would look something like this, say one, two, three. A column vector would look something like this, seven, negative one, zero, right? Now, if I wanna use letters, I'm using caps for matrices. And we wanna get, because I don't know what it is, I'm gonna use either a capital letter, if I don't, I can use a bracket notation and something that represents the inside of a matrix, which is a bunch of scalars. How do I represent a vector? Now, there is no universal standard for vectors. So this notation is different than your calculus book. So given that vectors are very different types, what we will do is, for symbols, use bold font for vector, or you use a double side font. What do I mean? That means if I say V is a vector, I would look like this. That's a vector. Or if I don't have bold font, I would use double bar for this textbook. So if you have pencil, double up one of the sides. Because what's that? That's being lazy, right? And blah, 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 right? You can <laughs> do a bunch of scribbles to make it bold font, right? So instead of doing a bunch of scribbles, just go line line. It's like bold, but you didn't make it very bold. It's bold. It's 
it's double. And that represents vector. But because these two vectors are different, in particular, both of these represent the column vector. And since a column vector is different than a row vector, how could I use my vector symbols and turn them into rows? And this is where we get a differentiation between textbooks. In a calc book, they just put a hat on it to say this is a vector. This is not a hat. What makes it a vector is the bold or the double, which is a bold, <coughs> using a pencil. And the hat is used in particular to say that it doesn't go vertical. And so if I do the same thing and I make it a bold font, or I make it a bold font with a double, if I put a hat on it, that says that this is a row. That didn't look right. That makes this one a row vector. Everybody okay with that? What's nice about this book notation is the arrow tells you that way. <laughs> if it doesn't have an arrow, it means that way, up and down, so we can figure out which parts of this. Now that we have this notation, we have another way of writing an actual matrix, right? So back to the matrix. If we go back to the matrix, what's A? It's made up of this A11, A12, up to A1N, A21, A22, up to A2N. A M1, A M2, up to A M N, like this, which could be written as A I J's if I'm super lazy and just say that this is a M by N size. But if I look at it, I could temporarily say that, you know what, <coughs> if I grouped it this way, a matrix looks made up of a bunch of column vectors. But on the other hand, the person says, well, no, no, I like looking at it this way. Well, a matrix is made up of a bunch of row vectors. And so we could write it both ways. So how many column vectors are there? N of them, right? How many row vectors are there? M of them. So if I want, I could say that rather that that matrix A could have been written as A's, now here's the question, how do I make a vector symbol? I bold it, right? And if I don't bold it, I double aside. But this is A's first column vector, A's second column vector, up to what? A's nth column vector. Or if I wanted to, I could have rather written it as A's first row vector, and then A's second row vector down to A's what? Mth row vector. Each of these are bold font A. Everybody okay with that? So I can look at a matrix. Now there's, so I have all the ways. A single letter, matrix A. What is a matrix? It's a rectangular array of stuff. Well, what if I don't, want, what if I don't know what that stuff is? I could simply say that, you look, it's a bunch of AIJs where the I and the J tells you which row column it is. It's just a bunch of scalars. So I could say it's a bunch of scalars in their IJ position. Or I could look at it and say, you know what? It stores columns. Or I could say it stores rows. Which way do you pick? They're all the same object. What is interesting to you at this moment? Are you interested in columns? Look at the column variant of it. Are you interested in rows? Look at the row variant of it. But they're all the same thing. Same object. We have one, two, three, four, five ways of writing it. Get comfortable with being able to go back and forth between all of them. Okay. So we have matrices, we have vectors, we have different ways of writing these matrices and vectors. That's our toys. <laughs> so what's happened? Our toys have become matrices, vectors. But a vector is a matrix. It's just a one-dimensional matrix. And since it's so special, we call it vector. We give it its own name. And each of those vectors could be either called column or rows. And we're able to write them all down and symbolically represent them. 
Okay, if that's our toys, next comes the next part. Rules. Step one, we'll go through the process of, now that I have things that I, I'm going to do stuff to, now, one of the applications of these is obviously going to be what? Solving systems of linear equations. But if I understand them well, I could actually use them in other things, like a web search. Right? We're going to eventually have <coughs> stuff like, you know, sure, solving systems of linear equations has a purpose. But there's other things that we can do with matrices besides that. And they actually have some geometric interpretations and some other things going on to it. But the first rule that we normally have is, I wonder what it means to be the same. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, if it's an arithmetic, is equality. Now, this is based on things that actually are, right? So to you, if I gave you a matrix, which is made up of a bunch of numbers, in their position. And I gave you another matrix, which is made up of a bunch of numbers in its position. To your best interpretation, what do you believe equality should mean? It's like, well, it should be equal. But the problem is, let's say A is a 5 by 4. How many, how many numbers are in a 5 by 4 matrix? We have 20. Right? We have five rows, four columns. We've got 20 of these things. Now, what would be your first interpretation? So if I had a block of 20 numbers, and I have another block that I would say is equal, you had the word same, but what do you mean by that same? Right? What would be the first thing to you? Should they be the same size? Yeah, if I had like this, is, this block of numbers is the same as this block of numbers, well, if there's 20 here and 100 over here, yeah, that doesn't mean same to me. <laughs> when I mean equal, I mean equal, equal. What do you mean by equal, equal? Same size. And then what would be the next thing that you would say? Like let's say one is equal to <coughs> one, two, three, four. And the other one is going to be a, a two by two. But it's four, three, two, one. Are they the same size? Yes, but would you call them equal? Why not? Has same numbers. I see a four, a three, and a two, and a one. But same numbers in what? Same order, same position. Would that mean to you that the best way of defining equality should be not only same size, but same numbers in same positions? So that seems a really a, a good definition for equal. So we'll use that. I say it's equal if both are <coughs> n by n, so we're saying this is the same size, and for ij, aij is equal to bij. Same numbers in same plot, same place. running out of space. Pretty straightforward. All right, so that's equality. Once you have equality, it allows you to start talking about operators. Now, classically under arithmetic, there are there's one main thing that you first talk about, which is actually built up from something else, but we'll ignore that for a second. Um, one of the things we talk about is addition. When, if you take advanced mathematics, you get to prove that 2 plus 2 is actually 4. Because addition is not the fundamental thing that you know. Addition is actually the fundamental thing that exists is counting. How do kids count? How do kids add? What's 2 plus 2? They put them together and they count 1, 2, 3, 4. That's why they know 2 plus 2 is 4, because they can count. Counting is fundamental to existence, not addition. But for us, we're going to say, if I did add, and I understood what add means, 
what do you think one matrix added to another matrix should do? I mean, it should make sense. So we're going to start off with, what do you think matrix A plus matrix B should represent? All right, a lot of times it's like, okay, time out. This is based upon what? Systems of linear equations. And in particular, the coefficient matrices, right? So if I had one coefficient matrix, which was 3x plus y, and another coefficient matrix that was, say, negative x plus 3y, and I said add. How do you add things in algebra? You add what? Does the y and the x go together? No, Absolutely X. not. X is to x is y is to y's. You add like things. In matrices, like things are where? In a very specific position. So if adding algebra, which is what we did, Addition should do the exact same thing that we've been doing, which is add like things. So what is adding like <coughs> things? Well, adding like things is position. So I would just simply take the AIJ, add it to the BIJ, add positions. That's it. Where's If this is in the second row, third column, and this is in the second row, third column, add them together. It's in the second row, third column. Now, there's obviously one thing here that needs to be true same size, because <laughs> you don't have same positions if they're, oh look, this has, this has things that, well, that's not the same size. And it's like, oh. And so we still have to be both n by n. We still need the same size. And then you simply add like things. You just drop it right on top of each other. All right, so um, what about subtraction? Ooh, that's a very good question. What is, what is subtraction? Adding negative number. It's adding a negative number, but what's a negative number? That's like, I have a three, what's negative three? It's the same distance from zero, but on the other side, and that's a negative, right? That's the idea of subtraction, it's still addition, but it has this constant times it. So if I'm gonna subtract, I'm gonna have to figure out constants times things. Well, again, let's go back to systems of linear equations. Do we have the ability take a constant times a system. Sure, it's called what? Distribution. distribution. <laughs> and what happens for distribution? Everybody gets the three. Okay, so if I would have something times a, what does distribution say? Everybody gets the, the alpha, right? It's, that's supposed to be an alpha, sorry. Everybody gets the alpha, and so that means you just take the alpha and just take everything and multiply by alpha. It's distribution. But yes, this is called the distributive law, but we give it its own, as an operator. We call this scalar multiplication, which then allows us to do subtraction, because what's subtraction? Well, A minus B is actually A plus B. You take the negative through. And then, boom, we have it. So it's not really a new operator. It's scalar multiplication with addition. OK. Now comes the oddball part. Multiplication. So if I'm going to have the word like times or a word like product, uh, how in the world am I going to handle? So what I call scalar multiplication is really distribution. But I call it scalar multiply. But what would a matrix? times a matrix B, and this will be called matrix multiplication. Now, operators need to be defined according to uh, process, right? In other words, it has a reason for existing. Under normal arithmetic, multiplication has a very specific meaning based in its name. What is 3 times 4? It, and when we say multiplication, it means multiple additions. 3 times 4 is 4 plus 4 plus 4. I have 3 4s. I have to extend multiplication if we all of a sudden say, well, then what's 1 half times 7? Oh, I can take 1 half and 7 of them. Okay, then what's 1 half 
times negative 28.6. All right. I wonder what multiple. What if it's this length time? We have to then extend this operator according to arithmetic until we get to the real numbers, and it's geometric in nature with the constructive. So we have to do the same thing here. What would our be our understanding if I have a rectangular block of numbers and another rectangular block of numbers, and I'm going to have a thing called multiply? Now, most of the time at this point in your life, you've just been said, do it. So you'll do things like, okay, I had one, negative one, zero, two, and so this was a two by two, and I'm gonna multiply this thing by a zero, one, negative one, three, one, one, and this guy is a what? Three. Two by three, and it, those match up, so it's gonna spit out a two by three of some sort, and how does it work? What you would do is I would take row one times column one, and I would go through here and say, I'm going to take a 1 times a 0 and a negative 1 times a 3 and then add those up. So what's 1 times a 0? 0. Negative 1 times a 3? Negative. negative 3. And so this one position, this row, first row, first column, doing this strange multiply add object, spit out the number negative 3. And then I continue this process. I would go through it and say, all right, fine. Um, I would take the first row, second column, and that becomes one, negative one, which spits out zero. And then I would take the first row, third column, and that becomes, remember the way you work it, you just simply take your left hand, go across, your right hand, go down, negative one, negative one, that becomes negative two. And then I would take go to the second row to make the second row, and that would be that and that gives me what? Six. Six. That and then the one one gives me, and then that row and the negative one one gives me <coughs> two. We just did it. I did this row thing on my left hand, this column thing on my right hand, and they went across as these operators. Now we get to take linear algebra, which is what in the world did you just do and why did you do it and does it make any sense? And what we'll do is we'll go back to systems of linear equations. That's what this is supposed to be based upon. Okay. Why is this happening? So we'll take the simplest thing. If this is used to solve systems of linear equations. Studying systems of linear equations should help us understand it a bit. So let's take something easy. 2x minus y is equal to 4. As a matrix, what's the coefficient matrix? 2, two, negative, one. two negative 1. What's the constants on the other side? OK, so what's the dimensions on the left? <coughs> it's 1 by 2. What's the dimensions of the right? 1 by 1. Now, there's something here that I haven't written down. On a systems of linear equations, when we make an augmented matrix, it's there, we ignore it. What is it? The variables, x and y. And so what in the world for these variables, <coughs> which are x and y, how do I represent them in matrix arithmetic? And so let's look at what should happen. So what should happen here is I should have my coefficient matrix something, I'm going to have times, something, and it's going to spit out the constants on the other side. And the question is, how am I going to represent? Now, the something is obviously the variables. But how do I represent them? All right, that was a, a 1 by 2. Let's do a 2 by 2. Say so we had 2x minus y equals 4, and x plus 2y is equal to 3. My variables are still the same. My variables are still vector in nature, right? They're just an xy. But my coefficient matrix has become what? 2, negative 1, 1, 2. I'm going to have to time something, and it's going to spit out what? 4, 3. So <coughs> both of these, obviously, 
this and this need to be the same object. Now, it's x and y. I have a choice. I could choose to write x, y like this, or I could choose to write x, y like this. It doesn't, you may like, ah, Now, which one works? Well, we have to ask what happens. If I would put x, y like this, what does it look like is happening? It looks like same position, like 2 times x, negative 1 times y is 4, becomes that, right? It kind of looks like it may work. It looks like you just simply multiply positions. Boy, that does not look like this. Because <laughs> this has four positions. These has two. So what am I going to do on this? And so a row doesn't look like it'll work. And so what we define is a process of multiplying a row times a column. And so what we do is we just simply define the following simpler operator. Is if you take a row and you multiply a column. If you take a row and you multiply a column, the following curves. The first thing of the row, the first thing of the column, the second thing of the row, the second thing of the column becomes a scalar. And this is called a scalar problem. No, sorry an inner product eventually. It has several names. It's called scalar product, inner product, because it becomes a multiplication that spits out a single number. And so this is what happens when you say a row times a column spits out one number. And that's our understanding. And these better be the same size. So a row vector times a column vector is a single number. So how does that work? Well, that's a row vector. Times a column vector is that number. This is a row vector times that column vector is this number. So it's a distribution. So if I have a matrix times a column, it's really row times column, row times column. It's just distribution. Everybody gets this. Every row that I have spits out this object. So what we have by studying this variant of the problem can become the following. So if I would have A, a matrix, times X, a vector, spitting out B, a vector. And so what does this mean? This is a matrix. This is a column vector. And this is a column vector. What we look at this and say, you know what? I can imagine, yes, I have a matrix. But a matrix is made up of a row, another row, until I get the last row. It's a bunch of rows. And then I'm going to multiply this thing by a column vector, and it's going to spit out B. In other words, what's happening is a row times a column a row times a column, a row times a column, every one of these is a scalar. So our new operator is, I know how to multiply row vectors, column vectors. A row vector times a column vector is that whole, what we did. Go across, go down, becomes a single number. Why does this do this? because we're solving systems of linear equations and it's what we actually did. It's a way of representing this technique. Okay. So we can consider a system of linear equations is a matrix times the variables equals the constants. But the way the action occurs, 
And so this here is your coefficient matrix. This here is your variables as a column, and these are your constants. But how did it occur? What happens is this is solved by taking A's first row times a column, which spits out a scalar, A's second row times a column, A's mth row times a column. This entire thing is just the other side, B1, B2, up to Bm. That's one way of looking at it. Now, <coughs> note. What would A one X look like? If you did multiply it, right? We have row, column, right? So what is the row? That's A11, A12, over to A1n, and this is the column. X1, X2, down to Xn. Everybody okay with that? We have n variables, and then each of those guys has that. So it looks like this. If you multiply that out, what do you get? You get A11 What's funny is all this work is just trying to do shorthand. <laughs> Plus A1, 2, X2, what do we do? We go through here and we go across, we go down, we multiply common positions. First times first, second times second, third times third. Add them. And so we just keep going until we get to A1, N times Xn. And so Looking at that, AX would become something that looks like this. A11, X1, plus A12, X2, plus everything up to A1N, Xn. But the next row would be A21, X1, plus A22, X2, plus everything up to A2N, Xn. And we keep on going down to AM1, X1, plus AM2, X2, so we get to A, M, N, X, N. Ugh. We've done all this work and we get a single number which looks like this. Now, when I look at this, I could pause for a second and say, you know what, if I look at it in columns, what does that look like? This sure looks like a scalar, which is what x1 is, times a column vector. And the next one looks like what? A scalar times a column vector. So if we would continue with this process, it looks like a's first column vector times x1. It's a scalar times it, plus a's second why did I write the arrow on a column vector? Second column vector times x2, and we keep on going until we get xn times the last column vector. Ugh. Okay. We're still in notation and trying to understand our toys a little bit, and using that to understand the operators. What do we know? A can be considered a bunch of AIJs. It's a bunch of scalars. If I wanted to, I could consider it as a bunch of columns. If I want to, I can consider it a bunch of rows. <coughs> then, what does AX represent? Which is the left-hand side of a system of equations. It's a matrix times a vector. There's two interpretations of this. One interpretation of this is, you know what's happening is I take every row and multiply it by the vector x. To spit out each of those scalars. That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it 
is to say that what I actually have is the columns added. But they get so much. I get so much of the first, so much of the second, so much of the third. So if I could sit there and look at this and say, okay, multiplication. <laughs> if it's a matrix times a vector, if it's a matrix times a column vector, my understanding is the following ways. I could look at this as each row is a row times a column giving me a scalar, and it spits out those numbers on the right-hand side. Another way of looking at it is to say that the same concept is take the columns of A and mix them linearly. Except you ask, well, how much do I need of the first column? X one of them. Well, how much do I need of the second column? I need X two of them. And so another way of considering this operator is to say that this is a linear combination of A's columns. The whole purpose behind this was try to solve systems of linear equations for a second. But they all mean the same thing. Well, why would you pick one or the other? <laughs> Multiplication means multiple additions, right? But when I want pi times e, I need to extend that. Because <laughs> it's like, I need e pi's? How does that work? I have to have some way of extending out that concept. And so the same thing is here. I could look at this and say, if I have a matrix times a column vector, I could say I'm just going to take the inner product of each of those rows. Another way I could say it is take each of the columns and stuff them together into one, one column, saying you need x1 of the first, x2 of the second, x3 of the third, xn of the nth. You need this many. Put them together, you got one. That's called a linear combination. What's nice about this one here, this last definition actually gives us a nice theorem, which is this as a system of linear equations has a solution if and only if B can be equal to a linear combination of A's columns. In other words, if this is mix up A's columns, the only way that this could ever possibly equal B is if you could do it. It's like, hey, take A's columns, put them together. I don't care how many of the first or second, or third. if there's some way for you to do this, 0 of the first, negative 7 of the second, 5 thirds of the third, and you put them all together and it spits out B, it obviously has a solution, which is what? The combination you picked. You need this many of this, this many of this, this many of this. And so <coughs> just solving it ends up being putting the columns together and figuring out what combo does that. Finally, What about a matrix matrix? Which is going to be, what about A times B? The way this works is this needs to be M by N, and this needs to be N by K. This will be to spit out a C, which is M by K. What's matching? What does the N represent on A? columns. Uh, what does the N represent on B? Rows. And so for this problem, it becomes if A, what's one way of writing A? A1, A2, over to A, N. What's another way of writing B? B1, B2 down to Bn. So. 
So if we take this <coughs> problem, we can look at it in terms of just row column operators throughout. And for each of these, these CIJ are just going to be this. Every element, CIJ, is just going to be A's ith column multiplying B's. Sorry, I wrote this row column. Let's make this get this thing right in my head. Sorry. The A rows made up of B's columns. And that the row times the column. So I take the I row, the J column will become the IJ scalar of the C matrix. Which is what we did back at the very beginning here. The first row, first column becomes the first row, first column. The second row, second column becomes the second row, second column. And we just take the row times the column becomes that scalar. Here comes this issue. How many numbers exist? Well, if this is 2 by 2 and 2 by 3, it's going to be a 2 by 3, which is 6. But each of those 6 requires the 2 by 2 operators internally, which is 4. In other words, we've got a multiply, 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 add to make one element. And I've got to do it 6 times. And this grows pretty quickly. Matrix multiplication is expensive. It takes time. And it's one of the things that we're going to have to work out with on the operating